So in this video, um, I will talk about scaling laws in the context of, uh, of BioMEMS lab on a chip and microfluidics. And uh, the topics that we will cover are going to be the context in which uh, we discuss these, the scaling of uh, the different forces that apply to these systems, and then uh, the effect of uh, forces on microscale flows. Um, to start with, just uh, to, to put things into context, um, how we arrived to where we are. And uh, if you looked at uh, videos from the last lecture, then uh, you already know about uh, the miniaturization revolution, you can put it that way, um, which happened uh, starting in the, in the second half of the last uh, century with uh, with electronics, with microelectronics, with the creation of transistors and then uh, uh, downsizing to the microscale, which uh, went on to result in MEMS devices and then BioMEMS and then lab on a chip. Uh, that is uh, how we arrive to uh, microfluidics, lab on a chip, BioMEMS and so on. But it is also how we arrive to Industry 4.0 which uh, is the paradigm that we have right now. But uh, soon enough, in the near future, we will have uh, Industry 5.0. If you know about Industry 4.0, then uh, main characteristics are that uh, now we refer to cyber physical systems. We have terms like uh, the Internet of Things and uh, is largely about networking and artificial intelligence. Uh, in, in, in both production and, uh, and in, in devices that we use in our everyday life. But Industry 5.0 will take a more human-centric phase. Uh, it focuses on sustainability and resilience in uh, production. The last uh, two years uh, have proven the need for more resilience. If you would like to uh, see some additional information, then uh, you can open the link um, in, in this... Uh, under the, the, the video in the description or in Moodle. Now, um, in engineering, what we do, and especially in biomimetic or, bio more, uh, or uh, yeah, biomimetic engineering, we try to imitate uh, nature, which is uh, the perfect example. Uh, nature makes the perfect systems. And uh, as we downscaled uh, our technology, we arrived to what was also part of the last lecture, MEMS, Microelectromechanical Systems, and from that uh, BioMEMS Microfluidics Lab on a Chip. You can see this process over here um, during still during the third industrial revolution. But uh, when Lab on a Chip and Microfluidics really uh, started to take um, a steadier uh, uh, development rate, was already during the fourth industrial revolution. So it began in the last century, but really culminated and uh, entered the industrial stage in uh, this century. Now um, to, to start talking about scaling laws, first we need to talk about the scale that we will use. Uh, we use Cartesian coordinates, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates or coordinate system. Uh, Length dimension is uh, given in characteristic length in meters, mostly micrometers, but uh, anyway, then volume would be uh, all the three uh, lengths multiplied. And then uh, the effects we study are mechanical, electromagnetic, and thermal. On the right, you just see a, a characteristic uh, representation. So this would be LZ, uh, LY, and uh, LX. As you might expect, scaling down can cause uh, some unforeseen uh, consequences. Um, basically, the laws still hold up, but the strength of respective forces are different. Uh, and just for this lecture and, and generally for the course, Remember that fluid can mean both liquid and gas, but typically for us it will mean uh, liquid. 
And uh, yeah, on the micro scale, gravity is negligible. It has a negligible effect on uh, fluids flowing on the micro scale, comparable to surface tension, because uh, forces that apply to a surface, to an area uh, scale by the square of the length, while uh, bodily forces scale to the cube of the length. And um, this also means that, uh, uh, yeah, not just surface tension, but also friction, but at the same time, also uh, co-flowing fluids don't mix with each other, apart from uh, diffusion through their interfaces. And this we will see in uh, later slides, what it means in practice. Uh, this is another thing why and uh, the, the reason why uh, this is the case. So surface area to volume ratio, uh, it helps to, to tell why the surface uh, uh, forces or, or, so, or uh, forces applied to, to the surface dominate over bodily forces or body forces. Uh, so this is the surface to volume ratio uh, as the length goes to infinity and um, it is inversely proportional. So at the micro scale, as I said in the previous slide, surface tension dominates, inertial and body forces are less prominent. This is also the reason why we can create uh, stable droplets just by means of uh, fluid mechanics. But uh, that's later in this uh, lecture. Uh, and also surface adsorption decreases that can lead to clogging. Also part of this lecture, not of this video, but of this lecture. We will get back to that later. And um, on the macro scale, you can have both laminar and turbulent flows. The difference being that in the laminar flow, the flow lines do not cross and uh, liquids only mix through their interfaces, which results in a, in a slow mixing. Whereas in a turbulent flow, the flow lines cross and, uh, and it can become quite chaotic. If you uh, want to imagine how a turbulent flow is, then uh, just think about the smokestack or a chimney and uh, smoke coming out of it. That is a turbulent flow. Now, if you would like uh, a deeper understanding of uh, the differences, then uh, head on to this video. The link will be in the description. Um, now, in the, mac in the macro scale, flows can only be laminar, and the reason for that will come in another lecture. So check out uh, fluid uh, mechanics too, as well. Now, uh, flows can be time and space dependent. Time dependence would mean uh, that uh, the flow depth changes in time, and we can have steady or unsteady flows. Uh, whether the flow depth changes over time. Space dependence means that uh, uh, it, it is about how the, the flow depth uh, changes in space. So based on this, we can have uh, uniform, varied, continuous, and uh, spatially varied uh, flows. This here is uh, part of uh, today's lecture. Uh, it is uh, what droplet microfluidics will be about. So this is a, a discontinuous discrete, also called multiphase uh, flow, where um, there is a, a, an oil phase and there's a, a water phase and they do not mix with each other. But uh, this we will talk about in, an, in another video uh, in this lecture. Uh, so the, the scaling of, uh, of different uh, physical laws. Uh, first of all, speed scales linearly, acceleration scales inversely proportional to the length, and forces scale to the square. What this means is 10 times reduction of uh, the characteristic length, which you can imagine as uh, the length or width of the channel, the, the minimum dimension of your channel, the, the, the length of your cross-section, and so on. 
10 times reduction of the characteristic length means 100 times reduction of uh, forces applied uh, to, to the volumes inside your system. So bodily forces are, or body forces are largely irrelevant in microfluidics. And what that results in, uh, as I uh, said previously, is that adsorption becomes uh, more prominent. And what that results in is easy clogging of your channels. So you have a, a narrow cross section of a channel. And if you have a buildup of particles, then eventually that will become a clog. Same shown down here with uh, some microparticles. But that is a downside of, uh, of microfluidics. And uh, yeah, so this here is a table of uh, how the different uh, quantities and forces uh, scale with uh, uh, changing of the characteristic length. Inertial forces and gravity are uh, cubically proportional. So if inertial force uh, scales relative to the characteristic length by a factor of uh, L cube, then if the length decreases 10 times, force decreases a thousand times. And similarly, the effect of gravity is, uh, is uh, uh, also proportional to L cube. So the effects of uh, body forces and gravity are minimal on the micro scale. I just want to drive this point through. Whereas on the other hand, viscoelastic forces are significantly amplified. So if the length changes one tenth to one tenth, then viscoelastic forces are multiplied by 10,000 times. And uh, for this video, that was all I wanted to say. So scaling laws, uh, how we are going to apply this uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, how the, the different forces scale and uh, the effect of forces on, on the, on the microscale uh, on uh, microfluidic flows. Thank mm -hmm. you.